Hey guys, this is Colby. Today I'm going to show you how to make this section of the face do clone trooper helmets, the breathing apparatus, like mask thing with the little teeth. Teeth are pretty easy, but uh, this mask section is pretty complex, so it'll be kind of a long video, I think. But uh, let's get started. So shift A, plane, let's move down right here, scale it down a little bit, and let's rotate it on the x axis, like 45 degrees. Just match it with the reference. And scale it on the x-axis. So the red arrow, there's S and then X and then scale it. Just make it skinnier. And let's match it like right here. So we can go in the side view again and just match the reference. So now go into edit mode on the plane you just created. Let's press control R down the middle, left click twice, and then delete half the mesh. And let's mirror it, go back in object mode and add a mirror modifier and turn on clipping. And this will symmetrize everything and save us half the time. So I'm going to move this edge to like right by here. And I'm just going to basically keep extruding along this path here, or wrap around, around this like jaw section. And you can add curves later on. Uh, if you want to add like extra curves, like right here, you can add an edge loop to make it more curved, but that adds a little bit too much detail too early on. So I'd re I recommend doing that later, after you have the basic shape of everything done. All I'm just going to be doing is extruding this way and just going around. So I'll show a couple of extrusions. Uh, select this edge, press E to extrude, and match it to reference. So Drag this on the y-axis, image to the reference, should be like right here. Do the same over here. Basically, it should just be following this line across the teeth. If it's not perfect, aligned, uh, that's fine. Uh, just as long as you get a general like shape and it matches, that's really all that matters. All right, so once you get to this point and you have a set of faces that just wrap around this jaw section here, uh, we can go ahead and start extruding this section down and to the side. And from the side view, you can't really tell where it's going, so you just kind of have to guess and just basically match it to the rest of the pieces that you're already building. So at this point here, uh, let's go ahead and merge these two vertices. Let's grab this vertice and this one. Hold on Shift, select like both of them. And press M to merge it last. So now it's all connected. And go ahead and match this to the reference. Which pretty much should be like right here. We're just trying to make this section here. And uh, we're not really doing this. these little details, like the attachments, like this little cylinder with the things on it. Like We can do that separately. All right, so now... Grab these edges and press E to extrude on the y-axis and press just drag, drag this green arrow <coughs> and go ahead and fill these faces. Select these two faces here, edges I mean, and press F to fill. And just make it look nice and straight. So this section should be pretty flat. So straighten it out. Press S, Y, and then zero. So for this section over here, uh, grab this edge, this vertice, and this vertice. Press F to fill. It'll create a new edge for you. And we're going to fill this section with a triangle. And we don't want triangles at the moment. Uh, so we need to add an edge over here. And that will basically create a quad for us, by, basically by keeping the same shape. And we'll add an extra vertice, which makes it a quad. Which is good, because it allows us to basically add edge loops and help redirect the edge flow properly. So let's grab all these edges 
in edge mode, press 2 on your keyboard, uh, press shift alt and select all these edges, and press E, scale it down, so press S to scale it, after you press E, so press, just press S basically, and move it, your mouse inward a little bit to scale it down, let's move this back on the y-axis, it looks a little bit strange, but uh, just gotta make this a nice shape. So I'll do a little time lapse and kind of show where I move all the vertices to make it a nice smooth curve. So the main objective here is to make this a nice smooth circle. So to help you out, you can use the smooth tool and basically just select all these edges and just make a nice curve. Uh, you don't want to overdo it because sometimes the smooth tool doesn't really work too well. So you have to do some manual labor as well as some smoothing. But just make sure to try to make this as perfect circle as you can. And later on it will be covered by this cylinder so it's not like super important. But just try to make this entire circle like a perfect circle. So now we can go ahead and fill in these faces and close this section off. So basically what you want to do is just grab edges that are basically facing away from each other. Or directly across from each other and fill. So these two go together, these two go together now, and net edge up down the middle here. Let's fill these two faces and this one here as well. And that looks good. And so at this section, we're basically done with this piece, uh, but now we just can add some extra edge loops to help match the curves and try to fill in these gaps between the main section of the helmet and the visor. So I'll do a little time lapse and kind of show that process. Also, one thing I forgot to mention, uh, if you're this far in the project, go ahead and make sure to duplicate your thing and just to kind of save your progress in case you mess up the main piece. I always have the backup. Select your object in object mode and press Shift D to duplicate. Just move it to the side somewhere. You can see all the stuff I've saved so far. So once you're happy with the overall shape of everything, you have a nice circle here and a lot of curves, like pretty much matching your reference, you can go ahead and add a subdivision service modifier. And you shade it smooth. Let's go back to object mode and do all this. And you can turn up the poly count bits to your liking. And to sharpen some areas up, you can just add some edge loops wherever you want them. So I might add one like right here. Or maybe like one down here as well. Just make sure to keep the circle nice, straight. All right. So at this point, uh, we're almost finished with this piece. So just go ahead and grab all these edges in edge mode. Shift Alt, select all these edges, and press E to extrude. Let's move it back. And scale it down a bit. Basically, just rounding it off. Move his back as much as he wants. I might move it back right here. So now let's go and sharpen this point here. And make sure to unsharpen this area. So grab some of these edges and just edge slide them. So press G twice. And that'll allow you to edge slide. And just try to make this section more rounded than in this section more sharp. Move them around a bit, and that's pretty much it. All right, so now we're ready to work on the teeth. They're pretty easy to make. We're just going to use some cubes and just place them around this section here. So for the teeth, uh, just create a cube down the middle. Shift A mesh cube, not circle. Let's scale it down a bit to this point, and then move it forward a bit. And then we're going to add a mirror modifier. Let's just duplicate this cube. Move it to the side a bit. Kind of rotate it a little bit. And scale it on the Z axis to make it taller. 
cover this entire area. So now let's add that mirror modifier and set the target as the cube we just created. And you're basically just going to duplicate and just keep doing this for the rest of the teeth. So for the last step, uh, just go ahead and select your helmets. Get this section here. And we need to add some thickness to it. So as, as you can see here, it's just like really flat. And we need to match the thickness of the teeth. So select your helmets. Go into edit mode. And press 3. And press E to extrude. And then S to scale inward. And we need to move it in, inside a bit. Try to make sure that the orange parts aren't clipping through the outside of the base mesh. Alright guys, that's the end of this video. If you have any questions, just leave a comment down below. I'll try to answer them. And if you could please consider donating to my Patreon and liking and subscribing to my videos, it would really help out my channel a bunch. And I'd be able to do this more often. Uh, but anyways, if you can consider also answering my straw poll, I posted a video that has like a link to a straw poll survey. And it just asks like what my subscribers and viewers would like to see next after this series. Because I want to really kind of see what y'all want to see. So that way I can actually make the best content for y'all. And the most interesting. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I'll see you guys next time.